Hi there, Susan Sanford from Vineyard Complementary Medicine. This week I'm going to start a series called Stabilize This, talking about how to stabilize our body parts to protect from regular daily activities, injury, pain, uh, preparation for sports, injury prevention, um, and also how to reinforce good behavior. So what I found is these um, neck exercises. So this week we're gonna do neck, stabilize this for your neck. Um, really, really helpful for me to help keep my head and neck in ideal alignment. Um, whenever I do any kind of strenuous activity, you know, fun sports like playing softball, I found batting practice just ruined my neck. Um, even going out and if you're not prepared, even having a catch as like an old lady, my neck got super jacked up. I had a headache for two days. Um, additionally, I find, you know, other, you know, and it's, you know, other old lady sports for, you know, bowling, golfing, any of that really kind of jack my neck up. So now, not only do I want to, you know, protect, you know, the old lady stuff going on, but these exercises are really great precursors to, um, high school athletes, student athletes, any, you know, anyone that's getting into their, any season, whether it's, you know, youth high school, college, or even weekend warriors, protecting your neck is super important, especially, especially for female athletes. They've shown that there's a correlation between stabilizing and strengthening your neck muscles and having better outcomes in preventing um, concussion related um, you know, issues um, post head injury related to sports. So it's really, really important to what I call building a brick wall around a stable spine. So what I want to share with you is how I help to attain optimal posture and alignment and then how I reinforce it and how it then prevents your neck getting super jacked up doing anything fun, even doing household stuff and even like protecting yourself when you're even just working on a laptop using your phone because I'm going to talk about what your core is for the upper part of your body as well. So. Optimal alignment. So let's talk about optimal alignment. Let's talk about how to activate your core. And then I'm going to show you some options for the basic introduction on how to stabilize your spine. So optimal alignment in my world is ear, shoulder. So you take your ear, your shoulder bone. So the top of the, the, the bone right there and your hips should be in alignment. Now that's ideal. Some of us have changed our posture such that our, our chest is tight, our pecs are tight. It draws our, our head and neck forward. So I'm gonna always go back to talking about your box. So again, just to reinforce the box, my box is the area between your the lower rib cage and your pelvic bone. So find these little hook things. So your belly button is here, drop down. You got your pelvic bones there. Connect the dots between your lower rib cage and your pelvic bones and you've got your box. If your box is squished and a little deformed, look where my head and neck is. So make it about opening up the box. So now from here, uh, uh, trying to get your head and neck in, in, in alignment, Ew, it feels weird, it doesn't work. So start with your box. Open it up from here and just see, I'm not doing anything with my head, neck, or shoulders, except they're just going along for the ride. So work on attaining your optimal head and neck alignment that would so to me so if you're if you're a little bit forward you got to work on getting that chin back and doing some of these neck retraction exercises to help stretch the, the back of your neck and to work that maybe you need to do some work on opening up your box um, whatever you need to do to get into your optimal alignment and that means as close your ears as close to your shoulders as possible okay your shoulders are down away from your ears your forehead and chin should be in the same plane. So you shouldn't be cocked up like that. You shouldn't be looking down like that. Forehead and chin in the same plane. And then you should be able to do a little check-in and make sure that you can be a bobblehead. That is your, and, and you should be at, you know, no increased pain. So that is your optimal alignment. So box, shoulder blades, bobblehead. Those are three of the six B's that I've talked about before for posture and alignment and um, optimal movement. Okay, so we've got our optimal alignment. Now we wanna 
we want to help secure that. So we talked about the blades. Your shoulder blades are your core for your shoulders, for your shoulders, arms, head, and neck. So your shoulder blades need to be drawn down and back, and they need to be strong. So any exercise that you can do, we talked about some band stuff in, in um, other videos. So doing rows, making sure that you're bobbleheading and activating your shoulder blades. You can do the pullouts. So I've done um, a few videos on the doorway program where you have the band, pull downs, pull outs, rows. I don't have um, a band here, but look at the other videos. And then the other, my other favorite, favorite core activation for your shoulder blades is to just fly. And everybody can do this because they don't need any equipment is to just get your head and neck in optimal alignment, right? My forehead and chin are on the same plane. And I lift and I squeeze my shoulder blades and I check in, shoulder blades are down and back and I can bobble head, my chin's in. And you can do holds, you can do repetitions, and you can do a set with your arms down, you can do a set with your arms out to the side like airplanes. And then you can do a set if your shoulder has the range of motion and you have no pain, you can do what I call goal posts as well, okay? So, so far we have attained optimal alignment. We've activated your core so that you can stay there. And now let's build a brick wall so that you can protect your neck from whatever it is that you do during the day. Whether you decide to get crazy and do a zip line and get thrashed around, which that happened once. And that made me realize that my head and neck aren't strong enough to do crazy stuff like that. So you either stop doing it and give up or you strengthen and stabilize. So I'm going to show you the basic isometrics on how to stabilize your neck. So attain optimal alignment. Okay, my forehead and chin are on the same plane, ears, shoulders, hips in line. And then I reach up and while I'm maintaining, so I'm in good alignment. Now I'm going to go forward. The movements are forward and back side to side, and then rotating. Those are the six basic movements that we're going to address for your neck. So first, side to side. Make sure that your shoulder blades are down and back, and you press, activate, five seconds, five times to the side, do the same things to the other side. And again, rechecking forehead and chin are on the same plane. So that's side bending. Start with five seconds, five times, see how it goes. Then let's do rotation. So you can put your fingers on your, on your temples like this and you turn and turn your eyes too because your eyes will activate the upper muscles in your, ne in your neck. So turn your eyes, look, five seconds and then release. I like to do this going back and forth because it really helps to create balance, symmetry, and stabilization. So let's say we've done it for five seconds, five times. So that's the rotation component. So you're just using your fingers to stop the movement. So, so far we've done side bending, we've done rotation. Now let's go forward and back. So what you can do is you can either take your, your thumbs to your forehead like this and do as if you're doing a nod like this, but you're stopping the movement with your thumbs five seconds. So your chin is drawing down and in five seconds, five times. And then the last one is put your head, your hand behind your head, get into alignment and press back. Now, you know, you're doing this correctly is if you feel with your other hand, you can feel the muscles activating on the back of your neck. Now, some people have issues with that because they don't have the stability yet and holding their hands up like that kind of jacks up their upper traps. Those people, you, you all who are, who you feel that need to work on doing your shoulder blade exercises more so that when you hold your arms up like this, your lower traps are quiet and you can activate your shoulder blades. You turn these guys on to turn these off. But if you're not there yet, I'll show you some pillow isometrics. So if that doesn't work for you, take it down or stay in bed. And you can do the same thing with the pillow. So this way I'm going to start with the same motion, side bending. Okay, make sure you're in alignment. You're not all hunched forward in a full fetal position. Get your ears, shoulder and hip in line. And then let's reinforce good behavior 
by pressing your ear and the side of your head into the pillow. Pillow isometrics, five seconds, five times. You can reach under, feel the side of your neck and make sure you're activating the right muscles. That's for the side bending. And then for the rotation, I like to put my hands underneath it. Again, chin in, make sure you're in alignment and then turn your face into the pillow and resist it. Like I like to resist my face into the pillow and then bring my hands up and bring my pillow to my face so I don't have to go too far. Five seconds, five times. Make sure you do both sides. Then roll onto your back and get into alignment, forehead and chin around the same plane. Make sure you're not up, make sure your head's not cocked back, your chin's not up, everything's level. Get your shoulders back and you press straight back so that your chin and your forehead stay in the same plane. So this is called a head press. Now, check and make sure you're doing it correctly by reaching back to the back of your neck and making sure you feel those muscles working. Start with five seconds, five times again. And then the front one is you put your hands on your neck making and the reason why you're doing this is to make sure you don't feel these these muscles jack up here you don't want to go Ugh, when you're doing this one you want to do a baby chin nod and keep these muscles quiet so it's a little different than doing the one standing and you do a chin nod and this is getting the deep stabilizers all right, and then the third option to advance yourself a little bit is you can still use a pillow. I happen to have a ball here, so this works really great, the exercise ball. And you just take a ball to a wall and do the same movements, side, rotation, front and back. So I'll do a quick demo. Okay, again, ear, shoulder, hip in line, ear to the ball, and you press. So I'm doing a side bending motion as if I'm bringing my ear to my shoulder. Start with five seconds, five times, work your way up to 10. I'm gonna do the rotation. So I turn my face into the ball. There's a little bit of movement here, but I'm trying to keep it as isometric as possible. All right. And then you can do the back. Line it up, make sure forehead and chin are on the same plane. Press it straight back. And then last but not least, forehead to the ball. And pressing it forward. Now making sure that when you do the front and the back, don't use your body weight. Making sure when you're doing the front one, your weight is on your heels. So you're isolating it to your head and neck. And for the back one, making sure that the weight is toward the balls of your feet so you're not just leaning your body into it. Keep the weight on the balls of your feet so that you can isolate the movement to your head and neck. And remember, you're building a brick wall around your spine. All right, so get into optimal alignment, hold it with good core, and then reinforce good behavior by activating all the muscles around it. I hope this helps keep your head and neck stable so that you can do what you want to do, including laundry after seven o'clock without getting your neck all super jacked up. Enjoy. Thanks, Susan Sanford for Vineyard Complimentary Medicine. Thanks for joining.